Okay, I was asked to do a video about AI. Um, I'm not really going to cover a lot of detail in this AI video. It's more going to be very, very brief about introduction, uh, equipment, and this, I want to preface this by saying this is what I use. This is equipment that I like. Um, there are lots of different options out there when it comes to AI equipment. I am only going to show you what I use and what I like. Um, in this, we're going to break this into two sections. I'm going to show you all my equipment in this video, and then I actually have a dough that I am going to AI um, in the second video, and I'm going to try and capture that, but I'm by myself, and um, maybe I'll get help later tonight, but basically I'm just going to cover equipment right now and a little bit about semen handling. So, um, AI, what do we need to get started? Well, the first thing you're going to need is a tank of some kind. Um, this is a, a very big tank. This is a 35 VHC. Now, those numbers on the tank mean something. It's, uh, the 35 is the liters. The VHC stands for very high capacity. So you're gonna be able to store a lot of semen in here. It's gonna take a lot of nitrogen and it's not gonna last very long. Then another tank here is a little, this is an older tank. It's an Apollo SX-18, which was the original like 20, uh, became the uh, MBE 2020. This tank is dry in particular, but I can show you uh, some of the components here. That is the cork. You'll notice that it has grooves in there for canisters. And um, actually, I'm just going to uh, pause this real quick and show you guys the inside of the tank. Okay. Um, I also, also put on a headlamp, which I find really uh, helpful for looking in here. Size of that neck, uh, I believe it's a 4.75 or something like that. Really wide, so you're gonna not uh, you're gonna go through a lot of nitrogen. However, uh, for someone who is planning on collecting a lot of bucks, um, or who is a semen hoarder, <laughs> this is a good tank for you because these canisters are really big. And so it makes it a little bit easier. So those grooves on that stopper are for these canes. So this, this one's full of semen down there. Now, some things to remember about anatomy of your tank. See that, you can see that frost line. See that frost line? As long as your uh, semen is in that frost line, you're safe. You can work right below that and be okay. You don't need. You can actually hold that seam in there for quite a while, and it's just fine. Um, if you're going to come up above the cross line, I'm really um, careful with my semen and I only do one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, and then back. Um, it also depends on how much nitrogen is in your tank to start with. Um, if it's really full, you can. Um, there, there will sometimes be liquid nitrogen in. The goblets. Oh, there you can see the reflection of the nitrogen down in there. Okay, so that's a little bit of an anatomy of a tank. These nitrogen tanks are uh, basically a tank within a tank. So the outer wall here has air between it and the inner wall. And there is a, this is a vacuum port. And that is how the nitrogen, which is um, which, which evaporates into air because the atmosphere is made up of uh, nitrogen and stuff. So, uh, but that's why they insulate it like that. Um, so hold times and things like that on your tanks are going to vary by the manufacturer. Um, and yeah, so that's just a basic look inside the top. 
basic equipment we need for AI is a tank. Okay. And uh, then I have a um, little shipper here. And that's for transporting. You can actually fly these on planes because it's considered a dry shipper. Um, this is my AI box. And I'm going to go over with a little bit more detail about the things that are in my AI box, which I now have kind of scattered across the floor because I wanted to show you guys everything. So at the very minimum, like for your very minimum equipment that you're going to need for AI is a tape, a measuring stick of some kind to monitor your liquid nitrogen level. Um, okay, so this goes back to your method and how you do things as to what equipment you're going to need. I do the warm water thaw, so I need a thermos. This thermos has a chamber in here uh, and a thermometer. You fill this with water. Hoping you guys can see that. And then you this has holes in it to allow the water into here. Um, but it also has like a little floater on the bottom there to, to keep the straw from going all the way down into the thermos. Okay, and it's got a thermometer. Something else that's really important if you are gonna do the warm water uh, thaw method is you should have a second uh, thermometer also to double check. Say measure twice, cut once. So I use a thermos. Um, some of the other basic equipment you need is a lubricating jelly, it's non spermicidal. Apparently, there's other brands out there that are better, but uh, I find this one to work just fine for me. Uh, I really enjoy this light that I bought. It's called a Coast. rechargeable and it's uh, rechargeable and it's amazingly bright. So that comes up on the video. Uh, it's got this little clip which is great for me because of the speculum uh, that I use. So again, this is something that is particular to me uh, because I use these glass speculums. So it clips right on there. Oops. my light, my speculum. Um, I get these, I had collected these glass speculums over the years. When I first bought this kit, it came with a bunch of glass speculums and they were the old uh, Pyrex type that like this. You can actually see Pyrex on there. Uh, they're a lot thinner, not quite as long, most of them. Some of them were longer, but I love this is a really great size to have for virgin dose uh, or a smaller, like a Nigerian, a Nigerian, so that would be great. Um, this particular speculum here is made um, by Sandy Van Echo, Dr. Lou with my light in it. And just for some comparisons, this is another old Pyrex. Um, it's a, got an offset. When you can actually see that it really was an old test tube. Um, also, uh, this is a, called a slimline plastic speculum that Karen Lewis with Frozen Assets has in stock. She sells these wonderful plastic. <laughs> um, it's also very small. I like this little slim line <clears throat> if I want to look inside of a young doe, a doe kid, or you know, um, sometimes if you're not sure what where you are in the heat cycle and you want to make sure that you don't irritate that doe, checking her using a nice small speculum is a really good way to check mucus because uh, it's not going to irritate her and perhaps cause any bleeding. Now, blood is very spermicidal to semen, so we want to minimize any chance of blood uh, getting into our nose from the cervical area. Okay. Um, so those are the glass speculums, my light, again it's the Coast A9R lube. You're going to need that. Then you need a gun of some kind. Um, I love the Continental. It's uh, the old school gun. 
actually had a biohybrid gun. Um, that's what it's called, biohybrid. It's available through Biogenics, but uh, I didn't like it so much, so I actually just gave it to a friend to use. Um, I, the way that I, again, everything has to be individual to your technique. The way I AI, I love these individually wrapped sheets. They are, um, you can get these from Biogenics. This is a continental sheath. It's individually wrapped. So everything stays sterile. Uh, and uh, because I put this under my arm, I load my gun and everything and put it under my arm um, when I'm getting ready to AI, to AI, which is why I'm kind of doing this video in two sections because I don't want to take the time to do all this. Once I thaw my semen, I want to go ahead and just do this part. So I'm explaining what how I do things before I'm actually in a hurry trying to breathe it down. <laughs> so um, I am going to show you actually my process, not fully because I'm going to use, um, I'm going to pretend, I'm going to use an empty straw, but I am actually going to load this, um, I'm going to sh demonstrate straw cutting, I'm going to demonstrate how I handle the semen as if it was real semen in a straw, and we're going to go over that in just a second. to this that I think maybe I should explain for beginning people, just anatomy. So this is a cane. This is what you saw in my tank there. Um, there's a tab on the top. Typically it would have a white tab on here that says what, it's, got, it's called a cane code. And that tells you the buck that it is, whatever the code is that goes with that buck. And they're all going to be a little different. Um, but this is called a cane and these little things here are called goblets. The standard cane will hold two goblets, so it'll hold ten straws on this metal piece. Okay, and um, here I'll show you this one with straws in it. It's two canes, or two goblets, sorry. Now if you're ever shipping semen, um, you always want to make sure that you place the semen on a cane in a in the bottom goblet. And even if there's only two straws in this bottom goblet, put an empty goblet on top of it, like it is right here. And what that does is it prevents those straws in that in that bottom goblet from coming out during transport, which is really important. And having them on the bottom, if you're only sending like five or less, having them on the bottom of the cane is always smart. Um, it's going to be colder towards the bottom of the tank, you know, in those shippers. So there's the what your semen is held on, and then in here is a straw. Um, this particular straw is a half cc straw. They do come in quarter cc straws. They're the quarter cc's, which are really common for cattle. Not so much for goat, but a lot of the expensive war goat semen is now put up in quarter cc straws. You will not be able to use a continental gun for that. You need to get a biohybrid gun um, for those quarter cc straws. Okay, so those go into the goblets on your cane. The cane is in the tank. Okay. This is a straw cutter. Uh, this is what I use. You can use scissors, but for a couple bucks to buy one of these. Why not? I don't... I mean, there's... <laughs> there's being thrifty and then there's just being kind of silly. Um, I... This is an extra straw cutter. The one I actually use for my AI is in this baggie, always. And I clean it with these Q-tips with rubbing alcohol after each use to make sure that we don't transfer any cooties or bacteria when we cut the end of the straw we're trying to stay as clean as we can. So when you do snip this um, straw, see, there's a blade. And we want to make, and so the, that's going to touch the top of that straw, and then you're going to put that down uh, into the sheath with that cut side down. And so you do have a chance of in, um, introducing something if there's bacteria on that blade and then you put that into the sheath, and then you go through the cervix, now you're definitely going to be able to introduce bacteria to the cervix. So anyway, so there's that. So when um, I 
handle my semen, I go from the, I'm just going to use one of these guys, so I find what I need by the cane code, and then I say, okay, that's it, so I grab my straw. Some people use tweezers, I do not. Um, pull that out, what I, and then, oh, sorry, I should explain a little bit more anatomy on that. A clear straw so it illustrates it better. This is a and there's a plug. I'm get it to focus, but it's in the so I apologize. It's a cotton plug made of like fabric. So when your when your semen comes in the goblet in the tank, it's gonna be this way with the plug down, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. And on this end, this is going to have. Um, oh, there we go. I had autofocus lock on for some reason. cotton plug, it should be down, your plunger of your gun is going to push on that and then push the semen out through your sheath and through the surface. Okay, so I'm going to show you kind of, not realistically, but step by step, step how I do this. I'm going to pull out a straw. Um, something that I learned because I had a straw explode. So my, um, one of the processors that I've used over the years explained that um, um, if you take the straw out of the nitrogen, wave it in the air a little bit, and then wipe it with a paper towel, and let it be in the air for just a minute, or not a minute, but just three, four seconds, set it into the thaw jar then, it's much better. Okay, so now you've got a straw down in there thawing. I put it in the thaw water, which is 95 degrees, um, for not very long. Um, usually just, so, and now at this point I have my sheath and my gun both in my arm pit to begin warming. Here's the gun and the sheath, and they are in my arm pit warming. We're going to pretend. So I actually put the gun and everything right next to my skin, under my shirt. I have a vest that I wear. Um, so now that we've got our straw is thawed, paper towels are really important. So what I do is I keep this under my armpit, just pop the top off a little bit. You're going to grab, you this water in here. I'm going to grab your straw, and what I do is I try to keep it in my hand like this, covered from light and to keep it warm, and then I wipe it off, covering it, keeping it warm in my hand, wipe it off really quick, and this is like not, I'm going very slow, okay, this is not how I normally do it, so then I put the, the straw cutter has a hole, it fits right over that straw, you go right down in, cut the straw, takes that wax plug off, then I load it, this is under my arm, I load it downward for my gun, I load the straw first because it's a continental, then you push your gun down behind the straw, there's a nut on here, you need to first of all push the barrel very firmly down and then twist the nut really hard. And then, I'm showing you this, but this would not be how I do my AI. I keep it under my arm. So that's the gun in on a continental sheath with a straw. Okay, there's the cotton plug, and this end would be into our gun. So, I 
like the Continental because it is flexible. Anything beyond the metal gun here will flex, which I love uh, to be able to work that sheath through, especially with older does who may have flaps of tissue and etc. Anyway, so then we get inside the dough, and this is why I'm showing you this now, so we have time to kind of talk you through what I'm doing. So I'm looking, and I'm going to find the os, and this gun is under my arm the whole time I'm looking for the os. We want to keep our semen from going, so I start at 95, it goes under my shirt, which brings it up to about 96 to 98, and then it's going to go up into a dough, which is at 100 to 103. So with semen, as long as you keep going upward in temperature, you are pretty safe. You don't want to go up in temp and then down. Shocking the semen going up and down in temp is a lot harder on it than to either start out really cool and stay cool, or to start out warm and then keep getting hotter. So we don't want too much fluctuation. But if it's good semen, you really should be able to kind of abuse it a little bit and it should settle those. But, so anyway, the continental flexes, which is wonderful, so then I get in here. Um, I try not to hold too much on the net on this continental because I have had them kind of come loose. So I actually kind of try to try to get it closer for you guys, but it will not focus. So I'm sorry. Anyway, so I hold my fingers on this actual sheath while I'm working this into the dough, okay? Now, I'm usually by myself, so I have one, one, I'm doing this one-handed, and then when it comes time to start depressing the plunger, I usually have to use my chin to kind of reach over and start pushing. And see there, you can see the, pl the plug, hopefully. Starting to move, I'm slowly depositing that semen. Okay. So that's some of the basic equipment. <sighs> the basics of how I'm going to do this in just a little while in the next video. And basically you just got to get out there and do it. And if it doesn't work, try again. Um, if it does work, you're going to be um, ecstatic. 